Hey everyone, this is a tutorial for the key assignment for elementary math methods and field experience course. So if you'd like to go ahead, we'll get started. If you click on the assignments portion, and then just type in the word key, and this is the assignment portion you want to choose. It's the course assignment. And if you look, there's these documents that I've included in the assignment. This first document, is just exactly like the second document, except this document has resources linked right into the document. This document here is the data. I'll go ahead and click on that and show it to you. This gives you an item analysis of the fourth grade fall um, screener. And this document here is the focus document. This tells you the questions that the students answered and how they were rated when they took the took the assessment. So this is the screener and then this is the results. Okay, And this last document is the rubric for how you will be graded for this. So this is the pillars and this tells me if you're distinguished, proficient, satisfactory, or unsatisfactory. Okay, so let's go ahead and take a look at the resource document. All right, so the, this up here tells the purpose and proficiency. And right down here is the learning goal. And this will explain to you the assignment itself. And just to let you know that this is an assessment based on lesson planning and modifications. So you wanna focus on the modifications portion. This assignment will account for 20% of your grade. And it just tells you um, during pretty much the whole course of the framework, what we've been doing is you want to know about how to complete a lesson and, and help the needs of your students by looking at the data. And we wanna go ahead and do that with lots of hands-on things. So students understand math and aren't just shown math. So here I will go through the steps in the assignment. Um, this information is you will study the data given to you about your uh, class, and that is this information. Oops, clicked on the wrong one, sorry. And then take a look at the focus document to help you determine the focus of your instruction. So that's this information. Oops, I am not clicking happy today. And then what we need to do is to develop a lesson plan for a week's worth of number talks and as well as a focus lesson for one day of instruction. So that means five number talks and one day of um, and one lesson plan for math. So this was added. It's not required that you use it. I was just trying to help find a template to use for a lesson plan template for a number talk. So if you scroll through this, it gives you a little background information on number talks how to complete them step by step, choosing a problem, so on. And then it gets down to the actual planning. And then there are two types of templates. There's a narrative template. And then there is also a template that's more based like a chart. So it's either one that you would prefer to use. And then the last two, they give you an actual example for both. So feel free to use that if you would like. Okay, and then um, down below it gives you the, the lesson plan should connect to the data and the focus document and should include the following things. So the learning objective including, <coughs> excuse me, including the standard you'll be addressing and then I went ahead and got the links for you for the Common Core standards. And then you want to take a look at the mathematical practice that you intend to highlight. And then what it did is attach this document with that explains a little bit more about the eight mathematical practice standards. And as if you go through, it lists all of them with a description below. So Hopefully that helps you understand those just a little bit better. 
you need to come up with a hook for your lesson and how you'll use it to connect to prior knowledge. Remember, we want to focus on that prior, prior knowledge. Uh, the tools you anticipate the students may use, and that's sort of things like manipulatives and hands-on. Um, don't want to see a lot of worksheets done here. Uh, we want to make sure that students are using things to help them learn how to do the math and not just sit and do a, a worksheet. So why I focus on that is if a student just does a worksheet and say there's 30 problems on there and the student does it wrong 30 times, that engrades that, embeds that in their mind. So for this assignment, if you could not um, stick away from a whole lot of worksheet use. Okay, and then you want to look at the important vocabulary in your lesson structure. What will you be doing and what will the students be doing during the guided practice? You need to tell me how will you form formatively assess what the students took away as well as what differentiation you will choose. And if anyone needs help with that, please let me know because that's a vital portion of the assignment. Um, we want to make sure that you do use differentiation because that is so important, especially in the field of math. Okay, and then for this, anticipate the strategies the students will use to solve the number talks and the focus problem. Um, you need to write down what you'll anticipate they will produce as well as the important math concepts you'll be looking for. If you look at the um, number talks, that kind of assists you with that as well, the number talks template. Okay, and then finally, think about what you will be doing, the future plans, and address that. And then this is a reflection piece on your experience with your cooperating teacher. And then here are some lesson plans that you can use. And we did discuss using BVU lesson plan templates as well. And then your Paper guidelines, um, the paper needs to be four to six pages. Make sure there's some proofreading sites that I listed here. That's not all of them. By no means, it's just some ideas. It'd be a really good thing to run your paper through one of those and see what information that you need to uh, change on that. Um, use the APA style. You don't need an abstract. And then this is a writing source for APA. And please submit your assignment into Canvas. And once again, the grading will be 20% of the student's final grade. So I look forward to, um, excuse me, I look forward to seeing your completed assignments. I'm sure they're all going to be amazing. Please contact me if you have any questions.